In this video, I will demonstrate something that is much better than ChatGPT generated summaries. I will show you how to extract topics from any text. I will demonstrate how you can take, for example, Google search results for a certain query and see what are the main topical clusters in those search results, which can be really interesting for researchers and marketers because you can quickly understand a certain field. I will also show you how you can upload multiple PDF documents, visualize the main ideas and concepts inside extract the main topics, zoom into them to see uh, how they're specific and how you can explore them in more nuance. And I will also compare it to the standard ChatGPT generated summaries like this one and show you how the uh, topics generated by Infernodus are actually much more specific and much more precise. So if you're interested to learn more, keep watching and I will demonstrate everything step by step. Also, a few words about myself. I'm Dimitri. I'm the developer of Infernodus, a text network visualization tool that you can see right now on your screen. I've been working on it for the last uh, 10 years, and I'm very interested in the topic of text analysis, so I'm just sharing my insights, and I hope they will be useful for you. Also, please subscribe to this channel so that this video can get recommended to other people who like the same stuff. So, in order to begin, let's start with a certain topic. In my case, it's going to be the topic of conversation, because we recently published a book with my friend on this topic, and I want to market it, so I want to understand what is the existing discourse on conversations, what people find, what they search for, and how I could reach out to them. Infernodus allows me to do this really easily by using one of the import apps, so I can type in a search query, in this case, it's going to be conversation and ask it to import the search results, top 40 search results from Google on the topic of conversation. The way that it works is that Infernodus extracts those search result snippets provided by Google. You can see them here on the left side of the screen, 40 of them. You can actually do more and then it visualizes every word that it finds as a node and every co-occurrence of those words as the connections. In case you don't want to analyze it manually, what you can do is to click here, uh, reveal high level ideas, so here in the analytics panel, and then it's going to identify the main topical clusters, so which words tend to hang out together in this text, to use a social network analogy, and then give a name to them, right? So we see that the search results are mainly on ticket management, interaction dynamics, organizational tools, learning frameworks, and then you have more topics here. So that's great because it shows me what people will find when they search for conversation on the web. Now compare this to what you would generate with uh, ChatGPT. In this case, I asked it, how would you summarize the content available on the internet for the topic of conversations? It has to always make something up. So it came up with uh, interpersonal communication, which we also have in our search results, psychological and sociological perspectives. This we actually don't have in search results. It kind of made it up. like. I'm sure things on conversations and on the psychological and sociological perspectives exist, but not at the top of search results. Conversational AI and technology, maybe a little bit. Debates and public discourse, so it's kind of like, just gives you a very general overview of everything that can be connected to conversations. It doesn't have to do much uh, with the reality of what you actually find. Another tool that people like to use a lot is perplexity. So here I did Google search on conversation and then I use a perplexity plugin and I'll just ask it to summarize this page. Let's see if it's going to produce the result. No answer. So it doesn't work here. And if I ask perplexity here, it just gives me like a definition, benefits, but it doesn't really tell me, you know, what, what is the existing content on this topic on the internet. It tries to provide an answer based on this. So I have to do a lot of prompting to get the same results here. In Infernodus, I just got these results in a few seconds. So I visualized the current discourse in relation to the topic of conversation, identified the main concepts and topical clusters, which I can see here. And now I can start exploring them in much more detail. So for example, let's say I'm interested in ticket management. What exists out there on ticket management? I can click this topical cluster and Infernodus will filter here automatically uh, all the search results that belong to this topic. So then I can understand a little bit what they're about just by reading through them. I can also click this uh, AI summarize button and it's going to summarize just the search results that relate to this topic. So I can understand that, okay, it's talking about deleting conversations in various contexts such as API calls, software tools, social media platforms, and educational resources. So it's probably some support materials on how to deal with, with conversations on online platforms. So that's good for me to know because 
my book is not about uh, social platforms. It's about the practice of conversation itself. So I know I have to position it separately by maybe adding some interesting keywords. Um, if I want, I can make a note about this and write to myself, make sure that you position yourself away from technical content. And then I um, save this, right? So then I can keep track of my ideas here and then I can go on. Uh, let's say I'm interested in interaction dynamics. What are they talking about? So I click on this topic and here we have a really nice new feature that uh, the users of Infranodos will really like. Uh, the ability to actually zoom into this topic and just show only results that belong to this topic. So you have these three new buttons here, right? So one is the one that we already had that you can expand the topic and see all the concepts that are in this topic. But if you click here, it's just going to visualize only this topic for you and then recalculate all the metrics and the main subtopics inside. Then we can undo this filter, reset filters, get back to the original visualization. By the way, originally Infranodus deletes this node of conversation, so I have to hide it again so I can see the context around because that gives me much more precise results. And then I can go onto a different topical cluster. So I was on interaction dynamics before. Now I can go into learning strategies, select this topic, see what are the search results that belong to this topic. I can again read through them. I can summarize them and get a nice AI generated summary just of the search results on this topic. So I understand a little, a little bit better on what exists out there, right, on this topic. So here's something about care planning, providing conversation guide and resources for establishing advanced directives. It explores the importance of conversation in end-of-life care. So that's interesting because I didn't think that there was uh, some stuff on this topic, like how can you actually use conversations to connect with people uh, near the end of their life or uh, elders. So that's quite an interesting insight for me that I can write down here. As you can see, what I also like is that you can actually use the AI not to generate ideas for you, but to rather think with it together, right? So here we're using some elements of AI, but we're not generating our own thoughts with AI. We're just using the tools to be able to quickly distinguish what are the main ideas and how we can focus into them and explore them in more detail. So for example, here, if I again zoom into this topic, then I can see more precisely what it consists of. And here it's talking about life enhancement, creative education and planning strategies. So that's quite interesting because I see that there is already some content on this topic and maybe I could connect my new book to those topics of creative education and uh, life enhancement. I can actually click here, save to notes, and it's going to automatically save uh, those main clusters here. Um, I can also auto-generate from analytics and it's going to create like a summary of the main ideas um, on this particular cluster and save it into my notes. Again, to reset the filters, you click here and then you kind of zoom back out again on the main graph. Remove the node conversation and then let's move on and see what else it's going to generate. So we were at learning strategies, now performance insights. It can be interesting for me also to see how to get rid of some topics that I'm not interested in, right? So let's say I'm not interested in this whole ticket management stuff. In fact, you have a button here that allows you to delete this if you don't want it. So if you click on this button, it's just going to remove this topic. You will see the nodes that are hidden here, uh, so you can get them back if you need later. And then you only see the stuff uh, that would exist in this text if this topic of support systems was not there, right? So here we have action selection. Maybe that's actually another one that we don't need because it's again some instructional stuff, so we get rid of that. Uh, and then let's see what else it generates. Conceptual dialogue, visual serenity, performance insight, linguistic exchange. So this is great, much more specific and much more pertinent to our interests. And that's how you would kind of engage into this process. Either selecting the topics that you like, zooming into them and exploring them either by reading or generating summaries, uh, but just for them using the AI, or you would uh, remove some of them that you don't need in order to see uh, how you can develop them further without the stuff that you're not interested in. So that would be two approaches. One other powerful import that you can do when you're researching a topic is to actually see what people are searching for. I always do that because I don't just want to know what people find, I also want to see what they actually search for because that helps me somehow connect a little bit better to their interests. And I can do that by importing 
popular search queries in Infranodus on that topic. Click here, it's going to extract related search queries for the concept of conversation and show me what people search for. And I can already see, so it, it actually removed the note conversation, I can already see that a lot of stuff are on the meaning of the word conversation, on English or learning English or apps here to learn English. If I click, I can see exactly which search queries I used. Uh, and that gives me an idea of what people actually need. But a lot of times it's about conversation starters with friends. So that's great because it already gives me the specific keywords I can use to promote my book. I can actually select them here and then uh, save them to notes through here. So I can kind of save some of the ideas into my notes so that I can keep track of the stuff I find. And if I click here, I generate the topics for them. So I can see that, for instance, uh, this whole topic is on starter topics, English learning, language meaning. Language meaning I'm not interested in, so I'm going to select it and then delete it. So what I have left are the topic starters that you can do with friends to have funny conversations. Now it becomes more specific, as you can see, and English ba basics. So that kind of like is a very good idea for me that I can market my book to the people who want to have conversations with friends or who want to have useful conversation starters or those who learn English. I have to make sure that I put all of this in. And to do that, I'm just going to click auto generate from analytics. It's going to get all these insights you can see on the right into my notes and I can use them later for writing marketing and content strategy for this book or for just talking about it. One last thing I want to demonstrate is something really powerful, something that also you cannot do with uh, ChatGPT or with Perplexity, is the ability to actually uh, perform the same analysis but on a bunch of documents. So here you just go to add a new text but then you go to file upload and I will choose uh, five research papers on chaotic variability. It's a topic that I'm really interested in so I'm just going to select some of them here, upload five. I usually like to not upload too many at the same time because you could of course do like a hundred but you know there are so many papers and it would be so hard to get to the nuance that I prefer to actually separate them into batches that are on a similar topic something I maybe recently read and kind of get like an overview of them and what you will see I find is really magical because I see directly uh, what are those those five papers about right if I click here on high level ideas it's going to generate the topical cluster names for them. So I can see that these five papers are about neural dynamics here, synaptic networks, temporal scaling, dynamical neuroscience. Let's say I'm interested in the topic of neural dynamics only. I click on that. I can either explore uh, the statements or to generate AI summaries just based on those, or I can ask Infranodus to just show me this topic by clicking here on this I button, and then it's just going to visualize the results for this topic and uh, generate subtopics for me so I can see what this topic actually consists of. Obviously neural dynamics itself, but then we also have nonlinear theory, behavioral patterns, cognitive mode. So there you see you get much more specific. And for instance, if I'm interested, what about cognitive modes? I can click here and see cognitive specific modes, see in which statement it was actually used and either read through the original statements that relate to those concepts or click AI summary and then it's going to take these extracts for me and summarize them for me. So something that I wouldn't be able to do with the other tools because first of all uploading five documents is not always easy. You cannot really easily do this in ChatGPT but also uh, to ask it okay like show me the main topics then only show me the statements that relate to this topics would take you a lot of prompting. Here I'm just doing it with the clicks of a mouse so it's a much faster process and also you're much more in control of what kind of insights you get because to actually get the clusters we're not just using some magical AI process it's a peer-reviewed uh, scientific method and algorithm that extracts co-occurrences of concepts works very similar to how latent semantic analysis works and it extracts uh, those clusters of ideas uh, organizes them in topics it's kind of like something that you can actually replicate it's not made up for sure like you're sure that it's not uh, hallucinated content and then once you extract those stuff that you find relevant then you can use the AI because you know there is a very uh, little context window here for it to make a mistake and this is why I find it's much more interesting for research because I can actually verify every step so AI here is not doing the job for me it's just helping me work faster but I still have to do the thinking which is something I really enjoy 
So here it says that the text discusses the dynamical approach to studying brain activity, focusing on cognitive functions, so here are the topics I was interested in, and interaction between different brain regions. It also explores the concept of stable heteroclinic channels and their role in cognitive process. Here and in front of us actually you have like a possibility to do something really interesting is that you can ask the AI to elaborate on this subject and you can ask it to actually derive its answer from this context. So I will say, okay, take that statement that you just generated, this summary, elaborate, but use the context of this document to give me an answer. And then I click chat because I kind of want to have a, an ongoing interaction with it. And then it's going to send back the statement that it generated, uh, then query the document against relevant statements that might relate to that statement, and then generate an idea for me that, that is derived from these five papers. So it's kind of like an agentic workflow, but where you control every step and where you can observe the results and give it slight modifications as you go along. So here it says that the discussion highlights the brain's complex network, where cognitive functions emerge from interactions within these dynamic systems. Stable heteroclinic channels serve as pathways guiding those interactions, ensuring robust and adaptable cognitive processes amidst changing conditions of stimulus. So that is quite an interesting statement that I can then uh, take and research further. And as you can see, what happened is that I took five papers, I extracted, I, I zoomed into the topic that I'm interested in, and then I extracted a summary of all the statements that related to specific concepts inside this topic. And then I generated the statement, which I now use as a starting point for my research. So I can also save this generated content into my notes and use it later. Maybe this is going to be the beginning of some exploration on what are those heteroclinic channels more specifically, how are they serving as, as pathways and so on, right? So there you would get a much more detailed approach. And then at some point when you want to zoom out, so as you remember, we zoomed into one specific topic now of neural dynamics, you can either undo uh, and return all the hidden nodes back into the, in, into the graph, or you can click reset filters, and then it's just going to do this automatically for you. And you deselect the nodes, and then you kind of zoom out to the original view of those five documents. And in that way, I actually follow what we call ecological thinking patterns. So here on Infranodus, if you go to infranodus.com, and then if you go to about, you can read more about ecological thinking and also the concept of cognitive variability here, where I explain in detail how this approach works. Um, especially more detailed it is on the cognitive variability page because it shows you exactly what those steps are, right? How you can oscillate from zooming in, zooming out, and then focusing and exploring. So Infranodus is also taking you through those stages. First you zoom out, you see all the main ideas here right? Uh, then you zoom in and you focus on a specific one, like we did here. Neural dynamics, focus, select just this topic, jump in, and then explore all the details inside, right? Focus on them. Then explore new connections. So instead of focusing on some specific ones, you try to generate ideas. So it makes your mind go from being focused on the content to exploring what is behind this graph, what is behind the periphery. Then once you're ready, uh, you zoom out again, and you jump into another part of the process. So it's really a typical way of how you would explore a certain scientific idea, but here you have software that actually helps you do that and that can guide you through the process by offering different ways and workflows and pathways uh, for, for you to achieve uh, this dynamics of thinking. So if you're interested to try how it works, go to infranodus.com and you can upload your own documents or use Google search or any other import. We have a, a lot of different ones. You can also import results from scientific uh, databases from YouTube and so on. So there's a lot of really interesting import options and I hope you find it useful. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments or feedback about that or any wishes or if you would like me to demonstrate some of the features in more detail also. And I hope you enjoy using it. Thank you for your time.